Welcome to episode 20. Joe's Java Jive is back. We took a little summer break, but I am so happy to be back and having someone who I've really wanted to interview and from the very first time I met them. So let's give a very big welcome to the incredible Laszlo Lang here with us today. In, I'm just so excited for him to pop in to this call. He is such an amazing guitar player, someone from the Woodstock era. His father, Michael Lang, you will get to know through talking to Laszlo. He's keeping his father's spirit alive in the form of being a musician in the Hudson Valley. And his new album, Woodstock 24, is just about to be released to the world. So go check that out on streaming services everywhere. And then come back to this talk because we're going to hear from the man, the myth, the legend, Laszlo. <laughs> we are here today with the incredible Laszlo Lang, and I'm so happy to have you on the podcast today, my friend. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing so good, and I, I'm really excited to have you on the show today. Lazo, you are such an amazing person and musician, and I wanted to, to bring you on specifically to release this week because it is the anniversary of Woodstock. Yes. Woodstock is a big part of your life. Your dad, Michael Lang, is the founder of the festival, who has honor we are honoring his legacy by having you here today and carrying on your musical tradition in the spirit of it tell the folks a little bit about yourself and and who you are and and what you're up to at this current time in the world so my name is laszlo i'm a 23 year old musician artist multi-instrumentalist um i make guitar driven heavy blues music and I'm a one-man band. Yes, you really are. So Lazlo's very gifted at, at playing guitar and building these tracks up. You play all the instruments. And it's an amazing thing to see you play. How long have you been playing guitar? I've been playing guitar for around 17 years. Oh, my gosh. That is incredible. So you're, you're here now. You're 23 years old, the same age your dad was when he put on the Woodstock Music Festival. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> so you're tell us a little bit about what it's like to be the son of, of Michael Lang, who founded Three Days of Peace and Music. I have his book on display here, um, and I think it actually has a has his autograph here. So for folks who, who don't know who we're talking about, what's it like to be the son of this guy, the incredible Michael Lang. It's, it was it was it was awesome. It was the best. He was the greatest dad you could ever have. And whenever, um, like when he told when he showed us all the Woodstock stuff, he like 
he was like very cautious of what to show us and what not to show us at that age. Yeah, yeah. certain thing the like, you know like find out for ourselves. <laughs> you'll get to the you'll get to hear it all later. But he he yeah. took you through. What was that like having having him walk you through his life and and one of the biggest achievements of it? It was pretty surreal, and through that, uh, it made me want to play. It made me want to play music for a living. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing because music is a big part of it. That's what everyone gathered for. Yeah, he showed he showed me the footage from Woodstock '94 when Green Day played and the mud fight. And when I saw that, I was like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. Wow, and Green Day is a big part of your life and your inspirations, right? Yeah, I know you're a big Green Day fan. You gotten to yeah. meet Billy, the band. It seems like a yeah. couple of times. What is it that you love so much about Green Day? So, the first time I heard Green Day, it was when I was six. My dad showed me the entire album of American Idiot, and it blew my mind. As soon as I heard that album, I was like, I'm going to need you to buy me a guitar right now. <laughs> <laughs> and when I got my first guitar, I learned every single song on that album, and went on to learn pretty much every Green Day song that existed at that time. Wow. So that like, so Green Day like really inspired me like to like get started on playing guitar. That's so cool. Didn't you just see them again this summer too? Yeah, I saw them about, about a week ago and they played American Idiot in its entirety. And it was insane. It was amazing. That's incredible. Dreams really do come true. And honestly, this is a dream come true for me. I'm so excited to have Laszlo on the podcast. I've told you from the first time I've met you, which was at the 50th anniversary, just how much your family legacy has had an effect on me and the entire world. And I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart that this community supports you all the way. And I'm so excited to see you rock out again at the 55th. So the first time I met you was at the 50th anniversary and you were, you know, holding a torch yeah. starting the fire that must have been pretty cool for you to see your dad on his first time returning to yasger's farm yeah it was amazing we hung, we hung out in a in max's house with a uh, bill hanley who did who was the sound the sound guy at 69 and it was amazing just being there with all those people and, and it was my dad's first time being there since woodstock so it was pretty awesome it was a really special moment i was actually lucky enough to have met your dad at the Woodstock Film Festival a couple of years earlier. And he gave me this card that I left on this cork board behind me for years when I met him. Because I said, I've always wanted to be a documentarian of the festival. When you do the 50th, I want to be there like Martin Scorsese was. Yeah. He was one of the documentarians on yep. the first one. And, I, and he gave me his card and it had this symbol on it. And he said, when it gets closer, hit me up. And <laughs> I was really excited. And then the 50th came, it was almost going to be in uh, Watkins Glen, New York, yeah. right, right near where I live. That was one that was your dad. He was really trying to, I think, create something again of similar magnitude. He was, right? trying, he was trying to do a, another, uh, he was, he was trying to do a three day anniversary festival. Yes. And, and I don't know if it were, if they wanted the same thing, right? No. <laughs> So okay. he, he, they did not, and he he the was partners, the partners were were uh, not professional at all, and they they ended up canceling the festival without telling my dad or any of his partners, and it yeah. just it ended horribly. <laughs> it was a really sad moment for me yeah. because my whole life I was like I've been hoping that my generation would step up and be more like your dad's generation. I. I got yeah. my hand on his book when I was a young man and it showed me how someone can follow their dream and take it from a head shop in, in California to all of a sudden booking Monterey Pop with uh, Mamas and the Papas and Jimi Hendrix to then what we saw at Bethel, which changed the world forever. Your dad did all that and he did it by following his heart. It really seemed like he brought his vision to life. And I was excited to see him do it again in 2019. 
It didn't quite work out and in Watkins Glen. However, yeah. somehow as fate would have it, me and my now fiance Serena had the most incredible time going to the 50th anniversary at Yasker's farm, which they do every year. Gerald and uh, runs a great thing. Her and her husband, Roy bought the property that Max Yasger's farm next to Bethel woods. And you're performing there this year, yeah, this Thursday. Woo! I'm so excited. Lazlo, you were going to rock out on the same grounds that your dad threw this festival 55 years ago. It's so exciting. And you're playing at Bethel Woods, right? Yes, I'm playing at Bethel uh, at tom tomorrow, uh, opening for Juma Sultan. So when this episode releases, I'm going to release it. It'll be that night, Wednesday, the 14th of, of August. Guys, go check out Laszlo or come by Thursday the 15th at the Yasker's. actual Yasker farm. It's I'll so much fun. At, I'm playing at 8.30 p.m. 8.30, I'm going to have my tent set up and just be wandering in to kick off our first night. And I took off work on Friday. I'm so excited that I'm going to get to see you rock out. And I did see you perform a couple of times. You were at the Rosendale Street Fest. Yeah, that guys, was a lot of fun. That was a you, blast. You went a little hard, didn't you? Bleed? <laughs> Your hands were bleeding. You posted online. You you really were yeah. feeling it. Was that a breakthrough show for you? Absolutely. It was my first time testing out uh, a, a full set of new songs, and it was better than I could ever imagined. You were phenomenal. It was such a great time to see you bring out your energy, and every song takes you on another journey through the mind. And I really think that we're going to collaborate someday. I could see us, uh, you know, you doing soundtracks for yeah, films. Absolutely. Would, you have that kind of sound that I could see the show or the movie having your sound throughout it. Yeah. My dad used to tell me that all the time. Yes. And your dad, we, we talked about um, before how the legacy he's had helping bring other artists their visions to life, the great, the late, great Karen Dalton. I was surprised to see your dad actually brought her music to her first album. He, he must have met a lot of great artists in the Woodstock area and been a supporter right. of them. Absolutely. Was, how was he? Did you ever get to tell your dad, uh, you know, about your love for music? Obviously, if you started when you were seven, do you think he, does he know, did you get to tell him that you were planning on making music in your life? I did. I did. Cause I knew I wanted to do it from a very young age. And from that on, he supported me every step of the way. Oh, that's so sweet. And he really is one of our, as someone who also lost a parent and went, turned to music as a, as my vehicle to kind of feel these feelings and send love out into the world. I'll tell you, he's probably your biggest fan. From the, from the great beyond. Absolutely. And seriously, Laszlo, I'm I'm probably one of the biggest Michael Lang fans there is, and I'm also in the Laszlo Lang fan club. You've, you've done an amazing job really bringing this momentum around your act. In fact, this seems like a really breakthrough weekend for you, playing Bethel Woods, playing Yaskers, and then you've got the album coming out, right? Woodstock yeah. 24? It's like 24 on Friday, and that day I'm also headlining my first festival. That's incredible. This is such a perfect time to capture you. How does it feel with this like rocket ship taking off of all these different things right now? It feels pretty surreal. It's, it's, it's awesome. Uh, I'm just having the time of my life out here. And you're rehearsing. I know you're posting every day. This is getting ready and ready yeah. to go. It's just you. You know, you're you're the That's one man me. band. What was the process like on, on how you built this, this most recent album? So this was the final of three trilogy albums that I started in about two years ago, I think, or a year ago. I can't really remember because there's so many things happening. <laughs> yeah. But I remember the, the first thing I did when I thought of it, I was like, I, t I told my dad, I was like, Dad, I have an idea this, this, and this. Yeah. And at that time, even though I wasn't at the point I am now, I knew exactly what I wanted to do for each of those albums. 
So what Woodstock 24 will be, what you hear, is what I had the idea for years ago. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, you're finally coming into your in own. Making. Years in the making. <laughs> Many years in the making and, and just seeing you evolve and from being right there by your dad's side six years ago, you know, at the Woodstock reunion to now going on to the stage, carrying your acts and putting on your backing tracks. This is all you and it's a hundred percent Laszlo. I yes. absolutely love that. That's, that was your vision, right? Is yeah. this is my music. This is all I me. I do. That's always it. And yeah. so now that it's happening, you must feel like, a. You know, this is a time, this is a time of your life. It's almost like your dad at this age, he's 23 years old and all of it started really coming together and, and finding yeah. its own. This is very fitting that it's all happening now in 2024. And I think the world has got this excitement and uh, change right now in it. I don't know if you feel the same way, but this has been a big, good year, I think, for a lot yeah, of it's us. Been a very good year. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, we've come out of COVID. We came out of the, the grief, both of us, you and I, losing a parent and losing a, a loved one, but also gaining an angel in a lot of yes. ways. You feel that spiritual connection in your own way? Absolutely. Yeah. Every time I'm on the stage, every time I, I'm rehearsing, I feel them there. That's so beautiful. And, and honestly, there's something about music and performing that always is a connector to the other side you know this yeah. the spiritual realm and man you really bring the magic i can't wait to see you perform at these upcoming events um i wanted to just mention to the to you the story of when i first met your dad and, and kind of the impact he had on me um i was actually working at the woodstock film festival where he was you know, presenting an award. And I think he was on the board for the festival. Yeah. I was wearing a t-shirt with this symbol on it. <laughs> and I get a note on the walkie talkie. We need somebody to come upstairs and photograph Michael Lang. And I was like, this is, am I really living this life? You know, this was after I had read his book and been inspired by the festival in a way that is different than, you know, I know most of my family and friends know about it and say, oh, yeah, of course, Woodstock is common knowledge. But for me, knowing this, this was like my favorite piece of human history is those three days, the yeah. Aquarian Exposition. So to see him, he couldn't have been more generous. He took, he sat me aside and, and saw me in my T-shirt. And there's a picture of me with my hands out like this, just loving sharing um, how much his legacy had, his, had an impact on me. And I'll never forget what he said to me, which was, we really thought we were going to change the world. You know, we thought everything was going to change after that. And in a lot of ways, I told him it did. You might not see it in your lifetime, but something happened there that showed the world, just like Max Yasger said on in his speech, that these kids can get together for three days of peace and music and have nothing but peace and music. And that is a, the real triumph of what he did. So just wanted to share that and, and ask you, you know, how does it feel knowing that you're part of that legacy in your own way and, and honoring the Woodstock name? How does that feel as part of, of who you are? It feels amazing. It feels awesome. Um, I always, this, this has been, this is something I've always wanted to do ever since I became a, Ever since I became aware that he was this public figure and did what did all the things that he did, I I, I knew I wanted to be the one to keep to keep the legacy going. Oh, that's so amazing, and it really will. It, this is the kind of thing that will never be forgotten, and it's captured forever in the Woodstock film. And yeah. I'll never forget him handing me that business card and saying, hey, "Listen, if you want to help." Where when we do the 50th, get, reach out. And sure enough, I can't believe I was able to be there at the 50th anniversary and Watkins Glen. Uh, when Watkins Glen canceled, we went to Yasger's farm. Yeah. And we, we saw your dad and you. And now that community is holding space for you to come and be back with a vengeance and your new album in foot. Yes. So that is quite an awesome thing to be returning 
does it feel like um, this is just the beginning or do you feel like yeah. I, you need like a break? Yeah. Yes, you're just getting started. Absolutely. What, what are some of the things you're hoping for as this, as this life unfolds? Well, after the album comes out and um, all these shows happen, um, I'm already planning. I'm already planning what's ne what's up, that what's next, the next yeah. album. <laughs> so that's so cool. And and fans of you can go on Facebook and Instagram and and find your music on all the streaming services. I'm actually a part of your little community on Instagram where you you bust us up little updates and yeah, tell us what's going there. on. <laughs> you never stop cranking stuff out, and and I love the, you, this work ethic. You're going to go right back into the studio and crank out what's next and i'm just such a supporter of what you're doing and i hope that as your life goes on we remain friends and creative collaborators i'd, I'd love to make absolutely. music videos and stuff for you as well someday absolutely yeah so it's it's really cool and i i'm also a big fan of your mom i got to meet her at the rosendale street fest i'm sure she also is a big supporter of what you're doing yeah absolutely She's a huge musical person and, and uh, also I'm knows my uncle through these Simone Shaheen Arabic music conventions that yeah. they went to. Another connection between our two families there. It's really cool to think of worldly music. Was your dad always playing different tunes for you growing up? But you said he showed you Green Day at age seven, right? That's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. What other music kind of did he usually have around the house or introducing you to other stuff that might have had a big impact? The stuff that he showed me that had the most impact were like he showed me he he, he made me and my brother each like a CD, like a little mixtape of like stuff we had like we had to listen to. Yeah. And homework. Exactly. So <laughs> for me, and it was it was different for each of us because we had different tastes. Yeah. For me, it was like most of like rock, like the Beatles, Green Day. That's how I heard American Idiot for the first time. The entire album was on there. Uh, Black Sabbath. So like all that music really made me want to play guitar. Yeah. Very guitar heavy stuff. Sabbath is great. And, and all this stuff had an impact. It almost reminds me of School of Rock when they're all yeah. leaving. And they're like, here, you need to, yes, listen to the keyboard solo on roundabout <laughs> and listen, <laughs> handing people what they, what they need to hear. So he, that's so cool that he made you those homemade tunes. Yeah. And did you guys go to a lot of shows together? Did he, did he like finding himself in a live environment? He did for a yeah. while. He didn't like before, before we were born, he didn't go to go to a lot of shows, but like, as soon as like, we were like old enough to like go to shows he like took us to every, he took us everywhere. It was that amazing. part of his life yeah. came back. Yeah. Wow. So your dad gave a speech at the uh, end of um, the 50th anniversary that I want to include at the end of the podcast, because he really at that time in 2019, it was, was taking on Trump. He was taking yeah. on these forces of darkness that are maybe, you know, something that he was not afraid to speak out against. Do you feel that, you know, he um, had this dream of still changing the world? I feel like even even in his older age, he really he didn't give up on, on this this vision from when he was younger. No, absolutely. He he had he he was not he was not done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he, and I think he realizes, you know, his what he did is still such an impact on the whole globe. I don't think, you know, not just America, everybody saw what happened and he went up against so much, you know, the town government saying, we don't want you here and we'll all kill, get out of here, you know, and having to change venues last minute. I can't imagine the stress of what that all must have been like on him when he was your age. Can you yeah. imagine? That's ins it's insane to think about that, that he did all of that at 23. <laughs> I can't imagine it. I, I'm 27 now, and I, I just to to see what he was doing at that age and seeing riding around on 
you know, I was motorcycle through the, yeah. through the ground. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> quite an amazing person. And there's just not many people who have that kind of a legacy because it's almost like a, a tribe leader. You know, I think of it very much. I often tell people in the art, artistic community and people on this podcast, you, you create a tribe. His tribe was almost half a million people at that day. Yeah. And, and I think he set the tone, right? Yeah. What he are really some traits think. of him that, that you think you try to embody? You know, parts of Michael Lang that, that you try to live on. Um, honestly, like everything. Yeah. Pretty much everything he did. It's all an example of how to, of how to be yeah. yourself. Yeah. His leadership, his, you know, his organization. His um, determination. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. It, it, the show must go on. And there's a real love for all people, you know, that I see. He said, no one's turned away. If they don't yeah. have a ticket, they're not turned away. That's such an important thing to have. And I think it's so cool that you are now carrying this on and sharing your music with the world. Um, and also, you know, not afraid to bring the attention to to what happened then and also how we can, you know, maybe recreate this kind of feeling in this current world because we need this gathering more than ever. I really yeah, think people absolutely. need to get together for that kind of stuff. It's and you're performing at all these festivals. You're you're gonna you're a piece of it now. Didn't you just do the uh, Woodstock '94 reunion as well in Saugerties? Yeah, I did. I opened it and it was it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. That was a cool one. So, how did that festival differ from the '69 one? Like, in for your dad, he was in a different place. It was a it was another whole thing. It seemed like it was more organized and a bit more successful, maybe even. Yeah. Um, and it was a new, it was a new type of, it was a new, sort of a new type of music also. Like, you know, the heavier bands like Nine Inch Nails performed, Aerosmith. Yeah. Kind of not the same old Peace and Love. And he was yeah. adapting with where the world was at and where the sound of music was at. And then you had Woodstock 99, which that was its own <laughs> yeah. kind of kind of a different situation. And it, and it seemed like it got further and further away from your dad's true vision of what, not even by his doing, but by other forces and things that came yeah. in. It's a little unfortunate seeing how where things went wrong in that. And I didn't really love the way they painted the, the Michael Lang picture in that documentary either. Yeah, neither, neither did I hit. No, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not the true story. Like, and, no. and I think what he always was trying to do was was I trust his his instincts all the way in that, and and that if they would have listened to him more, I'm sure things would have been different. But yeah, like when it, when they came to him for this for the documentary, I, he he didn't realize what he was going into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he didn't realize it. <laughs> A much better painting of your dad um, is in this Karen Dalton documentary that I saw. I mean, he was a real supporter of this woman whose voice is just so unique that he met her and helped produce her first album. And I think it's so cool to think of your dad as this renaissance man who who encourages people to perform. And he's done that for you. He's done that for Karen Dalton, Joe Cocker, Santana, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. The list goes on and on. And then you mentioned that shift into the harder bands. Did, does he like that kind of heavier music as he grew older? He, he loved all music? Yeah, he loved all he loved all types of music. Yeah. And do you, too, do you find yourself ever listening to still some of that old the Woodstock era stuff? Or you're pretty into heavier stuff? Yeah, absolutely. I Yeah, I, every, every time the anniversary comes around, I – blast the woodstock playlist that i made yeah yeah absolutely me too and i watch the documentary like every year yeah. one year one year i watched it on new year's eve it was a, a couple of friends got together and i was like let's not watch the ball drop that's lame let's watch <laughs> the greatest three days of of human history and put on my blu-ray woodstock movie <laughs> so <laughs> this this is a big part of my life so talking to you today and 
thank you so much for being a being on the podcast and being willing to chat with me about all this. You are such a such a sweet person, so kind and and giving with your time. Is there something that you want to be uh, your message? You know your your piece of of what you're trying to convey with your music. What would that be? That one person can do it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You play it all. You're the one man band. I produce it all. I mix it all. I master it. It's all me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it, and I love what you're doing with, you know, just the guitar and drums and yeah. your spirit. There's a courage to it that is like encouraging people to do something similar. Like it inspires me to want to get my looper. And I'm, I think I played something for your intro yeah. um, with a, with a little looper going on here. That one man band, it, it's almost like you're representing yourself entirely, all different yeah. sides of you, the rhythm, the melody. What is it that, um, you know, that feeling of when it all comes together, how did that feel in these most recent shows? Does it feel like the that live moment, you know, is what it's all about? Or do you like the studio process more? I made... The, I made the final Woodstock album, Woodstock 24, and the music, the, the unreleased music that I'm playing live as well, that's going to be on the next album. I made all of this music with the intention of it being played live. So, like, it's very, like, live sounding. And, like, you can tell because of the energy. Yeah, it is. It's got so much um, power behind it. And I love the vibes of it. Like I said, every song takes you on a different journey. And seeing you get into the spirit of it, man, it, you really have this rock star quality about you. You were played with such passion. Uh, did you get your fingers all bloodied up this, you know, lately? Are you trying to, do you play with your fingers? Or you play with a pick. Uh, I do. I only, I only play with my fingers. So like I play, I play like very hard. So like, this is your pick, your two fingers. Yeah. Kind of my entire hand I use. <laughs> That's so cool. I do something similar and you know, you feel it's really got your touch. Your fingerprints are all over this music and it's really just the beginning. So how has the three um, albums like the trilogy uh, give us a little walkthrough about like the part one, part two and part three and, and how it kind of has come together. Yeah. So I kind of, I kind of looked back on them for the first time in years because uh, I'm, I'm playing an album release show at the colony and I wanted to like dig back into the, the previous two albums that I made. Um, yeah. And looking back, but, so Woodstock, Woodstock two and Woodstock 24. Woodstock one and two were, it was me trying to get to where I am now, what music wise, like I really wanted to do guitar driven blues like heavy blues and at that I, I wasn't at that point yet so like i wasn't still i wasn't yet playing all the instruments i was like making beats but like i was starting to figure out what i wanted to do guitar wise and it started coming together slowly and you can kind of hear it if you listen to them back to back once once the final woodstock album is out i highly i highly recommend you listen to them like back to back all three of them because it takes you on a journey i am definitely going to be doing that and i'm so excited to see you live at this incredible festival at the yasker road reunion i've been hoping that you were coming there because i met you there with your dad and it's such a fun thing serena and i went every year since we went in 2019 and we went in the middle of COVID with face yeah. masks. We like found our community there, and it's this tradition we look forward to. And I was wondering when you'd finally, you know, return and and embrace this feeling of you are a member of this community. Not only a member, you're you're the prince of Woodstock, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel pretty cool to be coming back to the garden? Feels amazing. I rem I rem I grew up going there every year with my dad. Uh, to the end to the Yasker's anniversary so it's it's an honor to be playing it this year 
Oh, that's so cool. So you grew up really going back to these woods. It's a really special place. It and, really is. And do you have uh, memories? Have people come up to you like I am and said, you know, what are something that sticks out where you, you know, stories or maybe comments people have made when they come up to you? Well, you must hear a lot about that. Yeah, recently, the most things, the most, the most comments I've been getting is how much I resemble, resemble my dad looks wise and also just the energy and everything. And yeah. I think it's awesome. I love it. The presence of it is, is right there. And I honestly, you know, from what you have, you, you're also your own man. You know, it's, it's totally yeah. cool to see that you're developing your own skills, your own sound, and you know, you're, you're still not afraid to honor it. Cause I think a lot of people who are the son of somebody who is really famous, I think, I think you met John Lennon's son at the, the film yeah. festival. That's kind of cool that you guys cross paths. Yeah, it's it a little amazing. different when your dad's a beetle. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he definitely, you know, they wrestle with it. And I've heard interviews and I wanted to be cautious of it, of not talking the whole time about Michael Lang, but really getting the spirit of Laszlo because you are your own person. And, and I am a big fan of your work just as much as I am of what your dad did. Yeah. So as we move on to the end of the conversation, is there anything you want people to to send a call to action for them to to stay tuned on this Laszlo story that's about to unfold? Because as we said, this is just the beginning. Yeah, I'm just getting started. I have a lot coming, a lot of shows, a lot of music. Just be on the lookout. Absolutely. I will be, and I'll be there throughout the whole thing. Is there any other questions you have for me or anything uh, else you wanted to say before we close off the show? Uh, I don't think so. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to the incredible Laszlo Lang. I can't wait to hear Woodstock 24 again and live, and I'll be listening to the recordings. Peace, love, and music. And thanks for listening to Joe's Java Jive. Jolly Joe Jester is out. And we're bringing it on Michael Lang for the closing words from the 2019 Woodstock family reunion. Peace. Michael Lang. Yeah! Howdy. Wow. Hey. It's, uh, wow. It's just great to see so many of you are still committed to the values that to the values that we were all committed to in the late sixties when this event first happened. I just walked into Maxie Asker's house, and it reminded me of the first time I saw Max. I had just come over Heard Road and saw that amazing field and went right to his house to see if he was amenable to renting it to me. <laughs> um, and he was. And not only did he rent his house to me, but he, he really committed his loyalty to us and and was really the reason why Woodstock actually happened. So, thank you, Max. And the values that, you know, we <laughs> held and, the, and, and the, the issues that we were committed to changing uh, in the late 60s, it seems have come back to haunt us in a way. Um, since 2016, a lot of the advances that we've made in terms of kind of the human condition and how, how uh, we can get along together on this planet and how we can take care of this planet have been attacked. And it's really critical that 
when the election time comes around, every one of you and everyone you know gets out and votes. You're here. Yeah. So I just want to thank Gerald and the family for keeping this alive. It's an amazing job. It hasn't been easy. She's had the forces of the forces to fight against these years, and uh, it's just great that that uh, she's winning. So yeah, thanks yeah. very much. That spirit of the South. Gratitude for the earth's soil and to reap our harvest and all the beautiful flowers. Oh! Oh! Spirit of the West! Can you read my writing? I hope we give gratitude. That up. For the ocean, the blue, the plush beam, lakes, and the water of our mighty rivers. Aho! To the Creator, we ask your guidance in our survival on Earth. Give us the understanding of the purpose of our being. We thank you for the food and drink you provide. We ask you for your blessings on our brother and sisterhood. In closing, I would like you to remember all the souls of any of your family or friends that you have lost. I know they talked about that. You, you may put your candles in the fire at any point after we light the fire as to give in their memory. Or you could submit any other intention into the fire. I'm asking you to honor your neighbors, your friends, Forgive old friends that held something against you or you held something against them. It's over. Let's move on. Enjoy this Woodstock 50th anniversary. Be, be safe. Share peace, love, and music. And keep your drum alive.
for this and you can boss it later on. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice that the boss is bringing over. Oh. Some more, Good to see you, Michael. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring you some uh, sriracha cheese. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> That's definitely silly. So, yeah. Jalapeno Papa just says, you know what you can use? What? Okay. Calling. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi. Oh, yeah. Let me get a couple. No questions about why what is not happening. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, yeah. I just want to get you all feel what the legacy is of what you guys have done for the years. God, I mean, it's a... Um, you guys want to sit down? It's an interesting question. I guess it's uh, You know, it's a legacy of activism and, and uh, social change and uh, trying to do the right thing. Hey, Bill. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Misha and Vladimir. <laughs> and, um, you know, it seems to resonate even louder today than it did back then in some ways because of what's going on in our country and around the world. Um, and I think the legacy is that we would start with a moment of hope for everybody. We all to sort of live a better life together in you know, compassion and peace and uh, Seems more relevant now than ever. Mm. Yeah. And, um, um, what does it feel like coming back here to the Oscar Farm? <laughs> yeah, it's always, you know, brings back memories. <laughs> For sure. Special place. Uh, people, uh, I'm kind of amazed that people keep coming back here. Every year. Yeah, I mean, it, it made, a, made a very big difference in a lot of people's lives. And so, you know, it's got that attraction. I mean, it's where I think everybody who was at the original festival had their lives changed in one And so this is just, you know, revisiting. Yeah. Um, some people don't hope that you are. Somebody else will pull it off another time? We try it, and it's always next time. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think you'll try again? Yeah, I think we will. There's an election coming up, and I think it's a good, uh, good uh, occasion. For, you know, a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for what you've done. Thanks. Pleasure. We got to join you. Shall we? Thanks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.